Okay, we're going to try to find out why people are having so much trouble building this circuit. And I think it comes from the published circuit, not by Rosemary, but by a journal. And this is it here. Very ugly. And uh, I did make uh, some changes. But basically it can be confusing, especially around the IC. And so when I started to do this, and this is a continuation of me just adding the level control into the, the circuit, and I will be adding a bias control because that's extremely important. However, you can yourself double check on my build by looking at this uh, breadboard. It is in HD, it is perfectly clear. In fact, I think just in HQ, it's perfectly clear that you can go ahead and trace all my components and see if I had a mistake. And that's uh, what I did. But what I, how I built this, I redrew the original article one to make it clearer. Uh, so uh, we took um, uh, that circuit that was not so clear and we did make some changes in it. And so here is uh, actually one of the schematics that I used to rebuild after I redrew the, uh, the um, circuit. Uh, the pin numbers, as you can see there, are based on the 556 so that I did not make any mistakes in translating the pin connections from the 555 timer to the 556 and uh, I try to be very careful in my builds but you know I can make mistakes that's for sure so also I had in my possession a much clearer drawing and this is it of the circuit so it was a combination of the one you just saw in this circuit that I did the build and uh, using the breadboarding and doing a you know uh, layout one by one if you're extremely careful, it's almost impossible to do any type of mistake. Uh, you will see that I do not have the filler capacitor or the diode coming, the isolation diode coming from the power supply. It's not necessary since my lab box already has that in it. And we're just dealing with the, 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 the timer circuit. I'm not with the, uh, the MOSFET. So again, here is my layout. Uh, freeze frame it and check it out. But here is my double check that I did today looking at my breadboard and diagramming it out to make sure I did not have any mistakes. I could not find any. And the bottom you're going to see the pinout for the 556 as well as the 555. Now there could be a possibility that the data sheets were wrong. I don't know. That's hard to say. Uh, anyway, uh, one person said, well you know, uh, you don't have a square tip at the top. Uh, and I think that's due to because I'm using a sound card and a very simple probe. Uh, this is no secret. I have a video on how to use uh, cheap instruments to do this work. You do not have to have the best Tektronik. However, I have a new one on order. And we'll try to have that in that next test if it arrives in time. So there's no question that is a, that is a short duty cycle. And this is at the higher frequency range. And I was playing around and I adjusted the mark space control and that's why it's more peaked. That peak can be adjusted by the mark space uh, control. Is the circuit optimized? I, I wouldn't think it's an optimized circuit at all. But I wanted to duplicate hers. And so uh, up is positive and down is negative. So we're looking at positive going pulses. We're looking at a short duty cycle. There's no other way. There's no invert switch been turned on the software that is positive spikes and that so there's some ringing at the bottom uh, again that could be due to the sound card but the thing is the sound card is not going to with the software is not going to make mistakes in a duty cycle so I haven't measured that but that if you look back at that first one's a really narrow one it seems to get a little bit wider as you go up in frequency and so uh, I want to just try this circuit out on driving my version of the MOSFET driving the dual winding coil. So again, I'll drive this in three weeks. I'll be back too, and I hope maybe some people can find out what they did wrong because as far as I'm concerned, everything is working correctly. Thanks for watching.